The overall goal of this procedure is to characterize GABA-B receptor-mediated effects in identified hippocampal parvalbumin-positive interneurons. This is accomplished by first producing high-quality acute hippocampal slices. The second step is to use a video microscope to select neurons based on venous YFP expression and known characteristics of parvalbumin-positive neurons. Next, whole cell patch clamp recordings are obtained and either extracellular stimulation or paired recordings are used to examine GABA-B receptor-mediated effects. The final step is to visualize the neurons and confirm that the recorded neurons are in fact parvalbumin-positive and are either parasomatic or dendritic inhibitory neurons. Ultimately, this method enables the characterization of GABA-B receptor-mediated inhibitory effects and allows unequivocal classification of the recorded interneurons. This method can answer key questions in the interneuron field, for example, how interneurons communicate with each other, how their excitability, their synaptic output is controlled by neuromodulatory systems. Though this method provides insight into GABAergic control of hippocampal interneurons, it can also be applied to other brain regions, neuromodulatory systems, or cell types. Take the brain from a 17 to 24 day old transgenic rat expressing fluorescent venous YFP kept in semi-frozen, carbogenated sucrose ACSF. Using a scalpel, remove the frontal third of the cortex, the cerebellum, and separate the hemispheres. Remove the dorsal surface of the cortex to provide a flat surface to glue the brain for sectioning. Glue the hemispheres onto the vibratome stage. With the vibratome bath filled with semi-frozen, carbogenated sucrose ACSF, cut 300 micrometer transverse slices of the hippocampal formation. Transfer each slice to a submerged holding chamber containing carbogenated sucrose ACSF at 35 degrees Celsius. 30 minutes after placing the last slice in the warmed sucrose ACSF, transfer the slices to room temperature for storage. Pull patch pipettes from glass capillaries so that a pipette resistance of 2 to 4 mega ohms is achieved when filled. Transfer a hippocampal slice to the recording chamber holding it in place with a platinum ring strung with single fibers of silk. Place the chamber into the recording setup and begin perfusion with carbogenated warmed recording ACSF at a flow rate of 5 to 10 milliliters per minute. Use a video camera to assess the slice quality under IRDIC optics at 40x objective magnification. Assume the slice is of good quality if a large number of round, moderately contrasted CA1 pyramidal cells can be seen in the stratum pyramidale at depths of 20 to 30 micrometers below a smooth and lightly cratered surface. Using epifluorescent illumination, identify putative fast spiking interneurons as those expressing venous YFP with large multipolar somata in or near to the stratum pyramidale. Next, fill the patch pipettes with a solution containing a low and physiologically relevant chloride concentration for identification of postsynaptic currents and place it in the pipette holder on the head stage. Then apply a low, positive pressure through the tube line. Lower the pipette to the surface of the slice, slightly offset to the center of the selected neuron. Increase the pressure to 70 to 80 millibars and rapidly lower the pipette through the slice to just above the soma of the selected cell. Press the pipette against the cell membrane to produce a dimple on it. 
Perform this step swiftly in order to prevent biocytin labeling of neighboring cells. Create a gigaohm seal by releasing the pressure and simultaneously applying a negative 20 millivolt voltage command to the pipette. Once sealing begins, reduce the voltage command to the expected resting membrane potential, typically between negative 70 and negative 60 millivolts. Now apply a short pulse of negative pressure to rupture the membrane patch thereby achieving the whole cell configuration. Using current clamp mode, identify fast spiking interneurons by their response to a family of hyperpolarizing to depolarizing current pulses. To observe synaptically evoked responses, Position an extracellular stimulation electrode in the slice at the border of the stratum radiatum and stratum lacunosa moleculari. Recording in voltage clamp mode, use an isolated constant voltage stimulator to deliver either single or 200 Hz trains of 5, 50 volt electrical stimuli to the presynaptic axons every 20 seconds. Next, Apply ionotropic glutamate receptor antagonists to the bath in order to reveal the isolated monosynaptic IPSC. Further isolate the GABA-B receptor-mediated IPSC with application of a GABA-A receptor antagonist. To begin paired recordings, First establish a whole cell recording of a presynaptic interneuron as before, and confirm the fast spiking phenotype. Next, patch a CA1 pyramidal cell within a 20 to 100 micrometer distance of the interneuron. Holding the presynaptic interneuron in current clamp mode, apply brief suprathreshold depolarizing current pulses to elicit action potentials in the interneuron. If a synaptic connection is present, action potentials in the interneuron result in IPSCs in the voltage-clamped CA1 pyramidal cell. Once a connection is established, elicit pairs of action potentials in the presynaptic fast-spiking interneuron with a typical paired pulse protocol of two depolarizing stimuli with a 50 millisecond interval. After collecting the control traces, Apply the selective GABA-B receptor agonist baclofen to the perfusing ACSF, thus activating GABA-B receptors. Next apply the antagonist CGP55845 to fully block the receptor-mediated effects. Once the recording is complete, slowly withdraw the pipette from the cell body in voltage clamp. As the series measured resistance increases, Reduce the membrane voltage to negative 40 millivolts to seal the somatic membrane by forming an outside-out patch. Following the recordings, fix the slices by immersion in 4% paraformaldehyde with 0.1 molar phosphate buffer overnight at 4 degrees Celsius. Wash in phosphate buffer, then in phosphate buffered saline and block with 10% normal goat serum, 0.03% Triton X100, and 0.05% sodium azide for one hour at room temperature. To label for parvalbumin expression, use an anti-parvalbumin monoclonal mouse antibody diluted in a solution containing 5% normal goat serum 0.3% Triton X100 and 0.05% sodium azide in PBS. Incubate the primary antibodies for 2 to 3 days at 4 degrees Celsius. Following incubation, rinse the slices thoroughly in PBS. Apply fluorescent anti-mouse secondary antibodies along with a biotin binding protein streptavidin conjugated to a fluorochrome and incubate in a solution containing 3% normal goat serum, 
0.1% Triton X100 and 0.05% sodium azide diluted in PBS. Incubate overnight at 4 degrees Celsius. The next day, liberally rinse the slices 2 to 3 times with PBS, followed by 2 to 3 rinses in phosphate buffer. Mount the slices on glass slides and use a 300 micrometer agar spacer to prevent the slice from collapsing. Then, cover slip the slices with a fluorescent mounting medium and seal with nail varnish. Assess the parvalbumin immunoreactivity of the interneuron with a high magnification and numerical aperture objective lens. Cells are deemed immunoreactive for parvalbumin if immunolabeling is seen to align with the biocytin labeled structures. Take a Z-axis series of images with a laser scanning confocal microscope, imaging fluorescent avidin for morphological identification and three-dimensional reconstruction. Then reconstruct the imaged interneuron in three dimensions, incorporating the dendritic and axonal arborizations. The compound synaptic response of a fast spiking interneuron in response to a single extracellular stimulus is shown here. Application of the ionotropic glutamate receptor antagonists DNQX and APV isolates the monosynaptic inhibitory postsynaptic current or IPSC. Application of the GABA-A receptor antagonist GABAzine abolished the fast component of the IPSC. A train of five stimuli revealed a slow GABA-B receptor-mediated IPSC, which was blocked by subsequent application of CGP. These traces show action potentials in the presynaptic fast-spiking interneuron and short-latency unitary IPSCs in CA1 pyramidal cells under control conditions after bath application of baclofen and subsequent application of CGP. Note that baclofen reduces the IPSC amplitude by approximately 50%, whereas the GABA-B receptor antagonist resulted in an almost full recovery of the IPSC amplitude. A time course plot of the IPSC amplitude shows the effect of baclofen and CGP. A fast spiking interneuron shown at 20x magnification had a somata located at the border of the stratum radiatum and pyramidale of the CA1 area, with dendrites running vertically and spanning all layers, whilst the majority of the axon is found in and around the cell body layer as typical for basket cells. A 60x magnification image shows typical baskets of axons forming around putative CA1 pyramidal cell somata, which are marked by the orange asterisks. A three-dimensional reconstruction of the same interneuron is shown here with the soma and dendrites in black and the axon in red. The layers of the CA1 are delineated in blue. Once mastered, this technique can be performed in one day with post-hoc morphological analysis performed on several slices at once. After its development, this combined approach paved the way for researchers of hippocampal and cortical microcircuits to explore the morphological, physiological diversity as well as the structural functional interrelationship of interneuron types.